Hey, I'm John with Lynn Benton Plumbing, um, and today I want to talk to you about some things that you need to do around your home and property to get your plumbing ready for the winter and the winter elements. Um, this is important because if you don't protect your plumbing from the winter elements, you're going to have problems. And if you have to call a, a plumber at the most inconvenient time, you're going to pay a premium price. So. Um, I want to give you some tips and tricks to get your plumbing ready for the winter so that everything goes smoothly for you. Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk to you about is your pump house. Now, if you live in town and you're on city water, you're not going to have a pump house. If you live in the country and you're on a private water system, such as the Dumbeck water system, uh, you're not going to have a pump house. Um, if you're a pump, and pressure tank is in your garage, of course you don't have a pump house. However, if you do live in the country and you do have a pump house, this is going to apply to you. Um, the things that we're going to talk about here are only going to be applicable if you live in western Oregon or western Washington. If you live somewhere where it gets super cold for extended periods of time, um, this video really isn't going to apply to you. You're going to have to take uh, greater measures. So the first thing I want to talk to you about today is some of the components in your pump house. Um, the first one is your well casing, which is back here. That's basically a pipe that goes down into the ground um, that protects your well from uh, groundwater getting in and contaminating it with bacteria or other germs. Um, in this case, our pump is actually a submersible pump, so it is submerged down in the well, so there's very little chance of that freezing. So we're not really concerned about that freezing. Um, it's down in the ground where the temperature is going to stay around 50 degrees year-round, so that's not going to be a problem. Sometimes, um, if you have a really shallow well, you'll have an above-ground pump, and in that case, you would want to um, take care to make sure that that doesn't freeze. Um, our next component that we're going to look at today is going to be our pressure switch, which is right here. Um, that is basically an electrical switch that has water on one side of it that pushes on a diaphragm that's going to tell your pump when to turn on when it, the pressure gets low and when to turn off when the pressure gets too high. Um, next, we're going to look at this little pipe right here, which is the pipe going to your pressure switch. That's very important. Sometimes that can freeze up if you have a really long one, um, so that's important. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is your pressure gauge, which is right here. Um, that pressure gauge is going to tell you the pressure that your system is running at. Um, the next thing would be your pump T, um, which is this brass thing right here. You can see it's in a T shape. And that um, is basically a, a piece of brass that allows you to uh, plug in all these uh, other components. And it's specifically made for pumps and, and well houses. Um, the next thing, the blue tank back here is called your pressure tank. Um, that's a steel tank. It has a rubber diaphragm in it, and it um, basically holds pressure for your system, and, and that enables your pump to not have to run all the time. It can store that pressure, and then as the pressure gets low to a certain point, it will turn on, and when it builds enough pressure, it will turn off. So um, that's a nice feature. Um, the next thing is uh, the pipes coming out, um, which are going to go to whatever you have at your house. Um, there may be several pipes going out of your pump house. You might have one for your irrigation system, for your house, for your shop. In this case, we just have one pipe going out and serving the property. So if we had a leak somewhere on the property or in the house or wherever, um, we could just shut it off with this valve and that would stop the water from running any further. And we'd still have water here at the pressure tank. So if we wanted to take a hose off here, um, off this hose bib in the back here, we could still have running water um, for whatever we needed, which is kind of a nice feature. 
So the next thing I want to talk about is um, the insulation in the pump house and how we're going to protect the components in the pump house from freezing. So um, you can insulate the pipes and that's great. Um, we have some insulation here on our outgoing pipe. Um, the problem with just insulation is insulation just holds in the heat that you have in the pipe already. So if there's no movement and you have an extended cold snap, that heat is eventually going to be drawn out and then your pipes will freeze and when they unfreeze they will probably break. So insulation by itself is not always a great solution um, to getting your pump house winterized. Um, this pump house uh, also has insulation on the outside so I want to check that there's no uh, super large gaps here in the insulation and in this case there's not. Um, so by having this insulation again it only holds in the heat that's already in the pump house. Um, so another measure that we've taken in this pump house is we put in a light. Um, and in the light, go ahead, take it out here, show you. We have put in a bulb um, that is actually a heat lamp bulb. And what that does is it puts out heat, just a small amount of heat into this pump house um, to replenish the heat that's being drawn out by the elements. Um, you want to make sure that you don't put in um, a bulb that doesn't put out a lot of heat. I, I would avoid putting in fluorescent bulbs or LED bulbs. Um, you want a bulb that's going to put out some heat into your pump house because the purpose of this bulb is to put out enough heat to overcome the cold um, that could be freezing your pipes. Um, so we want to check and make sure that this bulb is working correctly because if it's not, um, and we think it is, we're gonna have a real problem. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into my outlet here. And it works. Now, if for some reason it didn't work, um, we would wanna take a look at our outlet. And if it was a GFCI outlet, we would wanna make sure that it was reset and it had power to it so we could plug in uh, a different light bulb or whatnot, but um, before we go replacing a bulb, we want to make sure that the outlet is working. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hang this back up. And I placed this light strategically so that it's shining on the plumbing component and it's going to put the heat where the heat is needed. Um, another feature in this pump house that we have here is this little block. Now this is called a thermo cube. You can buy these on Amazon for about 11 bucks. What this cube does is it will turn on at 35 degrees and complete the circuit from this to this. So it will turn on and off your lamp as needed when the temperature gets below 35 degrees. So you don't have to wake up in the middle of the night, come out and turn on your light when it gets below freezing. You don't even have to think about it. For 11 bucks, done. So that was a very great invention. Um, so again, we wanna check the insulation in the pump house, make sure that the insulation is good. Um, this pump house could use some more insulation on the doors. Um, maybe if we really wanted to make it um, really weather tight. Um, so another thing that we can do to keep um, our pump house components from freezing would be to keep water running in the house. Um, unless it gets really super cold out, water isn't going to freeze when it's moving. So keeping a really slow drip on the faucet, maybe a drip every 10 to 30 seconds, is going to be enough movement in the water to keep the pump house components from freezing. Mm -hmm.